we now bring you something amazing. Science! Ah. Uh, so I'm I'm super official. I right, I got my science vest on, my my science clothes. So you know I'm I'm a scientist, and I got my science hair. Um, I'm getting ready to stream. And I thought, I have another science thing. Let's look, let's look up and see what's going on in science. Okay, so the first thing I notice is that when you go to YouTube, or not YouTube, um, Yahoo, and you look up science, and you see some cool science information, the first thing it does is it puts it in Y Entertainment, and then it goes sci-fi. At least the sci-fi company is doing something with science. Even all the crap they put on their f channel all these years. Uh, this is actually kind of cool, though. I mean, th th these are these are legitimate stories. <laughs> I I don't know I don't know what's going on though with with news and entertainment. Like, this is now considered entertainment. All right, all right, all right. Let's look here. Um, this is actually kind of cool because, uh, you know, Dad and I were talking about um, the new space plane, right? Apparently it's in the news. And the new space plane has had six successful missions through Space Force. It's like, all right, you know, I, I would actually like to join Face For Space Force just to uh, work on these missions. That would be so cool, you know? I still think Space Force needs a better name like space navy <laughs> or um i don't know earth armada one <laughs> something that you could do with a deep movie voice right but uh no this looks cool this looks cool and uh it's like basically like a drone plane is what they keep saying and um uh, they're not talking about what the next mission's about, you know, coming up here on December 7th. But it looks like, um, I don't know, it just looks like a lot of fun. So, you know, um, the uncrewed vehicles is 30, 29 feet long, 9.5 feet tall, and has a wingspan of approximately 15 feet. Uh, its payload bay is only 7 feet by 4 feet roughly comp, comp, comparable to the bed of a pickup truck. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. You know, de uh, dealing with a lot of payloads. Um, so, it looks like a lot of, uh, a lot of cool stuff's going on. Uh, delivering stuff up to the space station. It's probably, you know, a lot of stuff is classified because of the technology on board, but it's really, like, mundane things. You know? Um... Like uh, equipment replacement parts and, and stuff like that. I highly doubt that they're putting tactical nukes up there. Uh, although I'm sure there are some satellites with tactical nukes up there. Um, you know, just because of mutually assured destruction uh, concepts, you know, or policies by different nations. Just so they can feel safe by being dangerous. Anyway, um, the it, so December 7th, that's the next flight. So that's one to look out for. Looks like a lot of fun. Uh, Hubble discovers closest Earth-sized world to our solar system, our star system. That Oh, yeah, 22 light years away. Yeah, that looks so cool. Um, so basically, a radio transmission, or even a light wave transmission, uh, we send it now. Uh, within my lifetime, within your lifetime probably, uh, 30 years, they'll get the transmission, right? And then 60 years, uh, unless they've got like faster than light stuff, 
you know, uh, we might get a transmission back. Or maybe they found us. You know, uh, if, if there's like intelligent life on that planet. Who knows, it might be the planet Vulcan. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. You know, if there's intelligent life on this planet, then we might be able to communicate with them. If there isn't, we might be just continuing to look out toward the stars. And it's it's like Carl Sagan said, you know, uh, if there are a billion planets out there, uh, or, or rather a billion galaxies, and each and each galaxy has a has trillions of solar systems and each solar system you wind up with hundreds of trillions of planets and uh well not for each solar system but with with those solar systems you all together you might wind up trillions and trillions of planets uh it's a scientific probability that there is intelligent life out there on at least one of those planets in the known galaxy. It'd be cool if we were neighbors. 22 light years. May also be 22 quadrillion light years away. So we have no idea. But it would be kind of cool if we were close neighbors. And uh, who knows? Maybe they're just like us. Or maybe they're like uh, jellyfish people. You know, like intelligent Metroids. Or maybe... Who knows? Maybe they're like Vulcans. Maybe they're like Klingons. Maybe they're like Romulans. Maybe they're like some sort of weird Muppet from Farscape. <laughs> maybe they're maybe they're bad. Maybe they're good. Maybe they're like us. And maybe they're so much like us, they're like, we don't want any of what's going on in Earth. So don't talk to us. Maybe we send them a transmission and then they respond to us by saying, Go away, you're blocked, like on Twitter. <laughs> um, who knows? I, it's always fun to consider possibilities. You know, it's always fun. But uh, maybe maybe there isn't really intelligent life. Maybe they're just dinosaurs, right? Maybe there's another planet with dinosaurs. That would be cool, right? Maybe we got a fantasy world out there. With dragons and wizards and everything. That would be cool too. Uh, it's always fun to think about what's on another planet. Of course, you know, 22 light years away, probably nothing out there. I'm sorry, I've got like cat fur on my face from my little, my little man, my co-streamer, Foxy. Um, maybe it's barren. You know, maybe there's some oceans and some bacterial life on it. It's kind of cool, though. Kind of cool, kind of cool to think about that. And 22 light years is not very far. The fact that it's only 22 light years means that we could potentially send a probe out there and in a hundred years start getting, um, data from it that allows us to to view it uh closer i say a hundred years but that's that would just be so that the probe could leave our solar system to have a better view of it without too many distortions um <laughs> there's not much travel that one of our probes can do i think i call them probes and technically they are probes you know satellites um uh, I don't know. It's it's a cool idea. I wonder what we're I wonder what we're going to do with that knowledge. SpaceX Starship fa launch failed minutes after reaching space. That sucks. Um. And this is we're into like the crazy stuff. Okay, so explain this to me. Sci-fi is reporting actual science. Time magazine is giving us some sort of report about some dipshit psychic and clone dogs. 
See, this, this to me, this Time Magazine article, to me, reads like something you would see on Sci-Fi Channel as the movie of the week. This is a movie of the week plot for Sci-Fi. Bloomberg. Oh, we got more scientific information from Sci-Fi. Ah, uh, and Reuters. Oh, Futurism. Futurism gave us this. So go to these sites. Go to um, Yahoo, because I don't like, you know, violating people's copyrights by giving you everything in the news reports. Go here. Support the site. Uh, make sure they know that you're reading uh, scientific information, because that controls what they show other people. It's all about metrics. I've tried to explain metrics to people. <laughs> Some people get angry. <laughs> the more you focus on stuff that's bad, the more the news agencies give you stuff that's bad and share bad stuff. The more you focus on something that's cool like science, um, the more you're going to see science being promoted. And that's how, how the basic concept of how metrics works on the internet. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yahoo Entertainment. I was on Yahoo News. I don't know why it pushed me over to entertainment. But uh, you get the point. Uh, these are fascinating stories this week. And uh, I hope all of you have a wonderful day. Take care.